Juan Camino Night Owls, and welcome back to the Stealth Hunter channel. On today's episode, we'll be discussing kind of a gear essential when it comes to doing the Camino de Santiago, and that would be headlamps and flashlights. Indeed. Whether you're an early morning riser or a night trawler. I don't care what flies eat. That's a worm. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's a worm. Whether you're an early morning riser or a night walker. No. That sounds too much like Night Stalker. <laughs> Whether you're an early morning riser or someone that chooses to hike the Camino at night, this episode is sure to get you through your darkest moments on your pilgrimage, including a killer hack sprinkled somewhere in the episode, so don't fast forward. All this and more when we return. <laughs> Welcome. Well, folks, today is the episode I'm pretty sure you've all been waiting for. Sure to be illuminating. Yeah. See what I did there? Light, flash, doesn't matter. We will be looking at all things flashlights and headlamps today, as I mentioned in the intro. Possibly one of the most important pieces of gear on your trip. Often overlooked, as so many pieces are, as we've learned through the years, or at least through the episodes on this channel. What I found is a lot of uh, pilgrims look at a flashlight as just another piece of weight to carry and you're not going to use it. We're going to be sleeping late and hiking during the day, which is not often the case, folks, for many reasons. Again, the ideas that you have in your head before you get on the Camino compared to the you on the Camino, totally different. You can't really plan for this. More often than not, I would be, well, in certain hostels, I don't want to scare you off, but in certain hostels, you know, different nights, there'd be different levels of snoring and i know i've studied under the best i mean i've slept under the best of them i mean these guys yeah it's true i snore as well but not like some of these people these people they got it down and so that said you'll be up all night and you can't wait to leave you're like looking at your clock like i should just get down the road now but it's it's dark and scary and shit medieval spain's out there waiting for me but it's funny how you it's funny the things that motivate you in that moment. And snoring is one of them. So, uh, though I didn't plan on hiking in the dark a lot of the time, I found myself hiking in the dark. And, you know, and note this. You're not going to be hiking in the dark for hours. Chances are you'll leave at 5.30, 6, 6.30. So you'll only be in relative darkness for probably about an hour, 45 minutes. You will see the sun rise. Never in your life will you see so many sunrises day after day after day after day. It's pretty magical. But that said, you're going to need to see out there. First things first, why do you need a light? Why? I mean, you're going to be hiking during the day. You're, I mean, there's plenty of people around. It's supposedly one of the most safest hikes in the world. Why do you need a light? Well, it is a safe hike. Some things won't change, like traffic, the sun setting, the sun rising, the time you leave, people snoring. So the best thing to do is just get out the door bright and early. Not even bright and early, dark and early. And for that, you're going to need some illumination. And, you know, you can join a pack of pilgrims that already have lights. <laughs> maybe that, maybe you can, like, mooch off of them. But I, th I say just bring your own, because you never know when you're going to be on your own. Let's talk about the importance of reliable lighting. You're going to find yourself in situations, all different weather types, where you're going to need a light. You're going to be up early in the morning. You're going to be walking on the side of the road next to traffic. You're going to be using trekking poles. The reason why I mention trekking poles is because headlamps are hands-free. So keep that in mind. That might be the route you take. I actually recommend you don't bring a torch or a flashlight, something handheld. Because walking with something in your hands is just dangerous. We've covered in other episodes. If you fall, you're going to land weird if you have something in your hand. It's also going to throw off your gait and your balance. So handheld, for the community at least, I don't think it's the way to go. Headlamp or a clip-on light is the way to go. So it's important to have a light on you. Not only because you're going to be on the side of the road, you're going to be on the trail in the dark, but also find the bathroom in the night. Some of these hostels you stay in are going to have, you know, five different levels, five different dor dorms, uh, hundreds of people there, and bathrooms are all hidden. It's up to you to find them. And in the dark, it can be fun, to say the least. Um, so a headlamp will not only serve you on the trail, it'll also serve you inside the hostel or inside the albergue. That said, you want to find a headlamp with a red light setting. We'll talk more about that as we move on. So you're going to want one for the hostel, not only for finding the bathroom at night, but also for inside your bunk. If you want to read in the evening, especially bunks that have curtains, 
so you don't disturb anybody else. But to have a light there to read, maybe go over your guidebook for the next morning, whatever the case may be, it's nice to have a light. You'll also probably be tempted to uh, hike the trail at night too. Some people are gung-ho about this. I've seen many, I've known many, I've met many, I've been one of the many. It's true. But yeah, definitely in the early morning, but not only do you need it on the trail, also finding a bathroom when you get to the albergue in the middle of the night, when you wake up at 2 a.m. and have to pee really bad, it's gonna be your savior, especially if you're in, I don't know, any, any one of the big dormitories, uh, dormitory albergues like Juan Valles and whatnot, where it's just hundreds of bunks in a row, the bathroom's at both ends, you need to find the bathroom, and then you need to find your bunk, and all of them look exactly the same. <laughs> So it can be pretty tricky, especially when you don't have any light with you. And you could use your flashlight or your cell phone rather, but that's a white light. You want something with a red light so you don't disturb or wake up other folks because they'll hate you if you do. And they'll put scorpions in your shoes while you sleep. It's true. So it's just good to have a flashlight with you. They don't weigh that much, especially headlamps. They pack really easy and you'll be thankful that you have one. You don't have to rely on anyone else for it. So those are some reasons why I think it's good to have a light on you. Now, when it comes to choosing the right light, and I, you don't need to get too crazy with this. Some people will get crazy with this, but I respect that. What I look for in a light is brightness, water resistance, doesn't need to be waterproof for me. Most of them, I mean, you're not gonna be using it underwater first off. So water resistant is good enough for me. Weight, good to consider weight. You don't want anything too heavy or bulky. So size and weight, kind of put lump that in the same little pile. And just ease of usage, if you will. And we're going to get to that because it's important. It's uh, You don't often think of these things until you're in that situation. Because many of you, including myself, at least for my when I was training for my first coming out, one thing I didn't train for was hiking in the early morning, in the dark, or at night. That's what I learned on the first trip. So don't make that mistake. Well, you might not have to make that mistake because I'm giving the tips. I'm, I'm, you're learning from my flubbing. Now let's look at some of the designs. The first one is a, well, it's a hat light, which I thought was a pretty clever idea. Um, I actually discovered this while on the community. In one of the villages at one of the Camino shops, there's, they're sprinkled throughout the trip. This one was a really good one though. It had like some really thoughtful items there for sale. And I think this was like 12 euro, I can't remember, but you can also find it on Amazon for probably under $10. And there's a good reason for that. It's really, the I don't know, the the, the build quality is, is rather cheap. It will get the job done, however, if you need some quick lighting, especially if you're on the side of the road, look at the techno effect as well, in case there's a impromptu dance party, which can happen. And this will clip right to the bill of your hat. And so if you are a person that rocks a baseball cap, and there's many that do, especially you Americans out there. I've seen you, you North Americans, that is. You love your baseball caps. This will fit fit on the bill of that. Also, most hats. So I thought that was a pretty clever idea. Again, it's cheaply built. I've used this at night off the Camino on hiking, and it's a cheap light. It doesn't cast great. It's not super bright, but... It gets the job done in the pinch, and for safety reasons, like you could put this on the back of your hat if your hat's turned around, and put on the blinking lights as you're walking on the side of the road if, for a little added security, or you can clip it to your backpack. But it's an okay light, super convenient, you know? But the clips could be a little more durable. They are plastic. Again, I might be just taking this way too hard. I've only used this a few times, so I don't have a completely educated opinion on this. However, Something to consider, cheap enough to try out and test out on your training hikes. Next, we'll be looking at the Petzl, and this is pretty much the company, as far as I know, started it all when it comes to headlamps. I've been talking about using headlamps, uh, Petzls, for Tikas especially, for over 20, gotta be over 20 years at this point. But this is the classic design. You can change the size, real easy to do. Here. Real easy to do. Uh, has a red light option as well as a blinking red light option it has a white light there's the blinking you think i'm pulling you over or you think you're getting pulled over for those of you watching in the car who watches youtube videos in the car you do and you should be pulled over for that but yeah another great thing of the petzl is it's you can adjust it so if you want to look if you're wearing this on your head and you need to be looking down at the ground in front of you which you should be doing in certain situations uh it you can bend it 
And this is one of the models. Some of their models, you can bend all over the place, like 360 degrees, in fact. You can twist it, you can even face it into your mouth if you'd like to. This is not that one, however. But this is a great one. I brought this on my second Camino, primarily because it was the red light that was really appealing to me, because I could wear I could wear this to the bathroom, trying to find the bathroom. I could use this in my bunk. I could hang it again from the cross beams. And if I wanted to adjust it while I was reading, I could. I could wear it around my neck, because I wore a hat. This is part of my problem. So I wear a big pith hat on uh, the Camino, which I think is one of the best hats, probably the original Pilgrim hat. Very close to it anyways. It, just one of the best hats of all times for a Camino. It's durable, water resistant, doesn't matter. It's just a pain in the butt to get this over the hat. So in that case, my workaround rather was to wear it around my neck. And you'll see a lot of people doing this. And you just bend this as you need it. It's not the best because you're moving and it's moving too, the light's moving, but, but it does work. So there's that. We have a hack though to get around that later on and make this do what we want it to, to do our bidding. So this is the Tika. This is 350 lumens. So it is bright and it does cast. This is, I mean, it's just, it's a pro model if you ask me. Like every hiker has this in their bag, backup or their primary light source. It's a great, great classic headlamp and I highly recommend it. And they're cheap too. They range in price from probably $35 to $150. Depends on the model you get, but it's a great dependable, water resistant, long lasting. You can get some with USB charges on it. Again, a reliable, bright, classic headlamp. Oh, another great uh, tip about this I should probably throw in uh, with Petzl's is the light, you can lock it, or rather you can lock the light. So if you're worried about it turning on in your bag, which does happen with some models, not by this brand, but with other headlamps or flashlights that you probably use yourself, uh, you don't have to worry about that with that. You know, one trick to get around that if you are using a torch, is to turn the batteries around inside inside the light before you use it. Then when you use it, put the batteries in right. It's that way, you know, if it does slide around and accidentally turn on there, you're not gonna waste any batteries, but that's just the side. But with these, you can just hold down the button for four seconds and that locks the light. And then to unlock it, you just hold it down for another four seconds. So really cool feature with, uh, with the Petzl. Next, I thought this would be a cool little hack some of you may have, you know, you don't necessarily need to go out and buy a light. You might actually have a little flashlight like this one. A blind jet. Ah. So this one is great. It's called the um, Exenco ex Shenvo Exenvo. You can't do that with the English language. Someone's trying to do something different with the English language. But it's by Sansent, actually. That's the brand. I don't know. Maybe that's the model on the back. Your guess is as good as mine. But this is actually a selfie light. You put it on your phone and you, you know, just you do your selfie shot with it. But it also makes for a great impromptu light. If you already have this, it can clip on your backpack strap and it'll be right in front of you. You can click it, clip it on your um, shirt. And this came actually with <coughs> some of you may have this. It's just a lens that like the light clips on any um cell phone so you can like upgrade your cell phone lens if you want a better quality i've gotten this year i bought this years ago however i don't use it with my phone but it's a macro lens but it came with this little light so if you have a macro lens or if you have some type of lens you bought for your cell phone check it to see if it came with a light because again if you don't want to spend any money this might be perfect for you and there's a little charging port there so it's rechargeable the light however it dims relatively quickly it's probably okay for about 30 minutes and it doesn't completely die till about a little over an hour. I've tested this one out. It's not bad though. It's really, you know, in a pinch, if you already have one of these super lightweight, throw it in your backpack and, and forget about it until you need it. But just remember, charge it to full power before you <laughs> bring it with you. If you're interested in one, I'll put a link below. However, it's not my top choice, but again, just a little hack. If you have one sitting around, it'll work. Next, we're gonna get into another headlamp that, I've, that I own and I've tested. It is a BioLite. This is a rather sleek design, if you will, when compared to Fuka, which is a little more, well, I won't say clumsy, but this more bulky and weighs a little more, but similar in design um, to the Tika. It, you can move the light around, making it a little more directional. Again, 
Yeah, it's very much like the Tika. Just a slimmer design. Has the red light also. I'm telling you, when you remember this, when you're looking for a headlamp, make sure there's a red light. Now, so this design though is built right into the strap, as you can see. So this is advertised to, uh, well, give you less bounce as you would find with a more bulkier headlamp. Do I notice a huge difference? I don't, I don't. So there's that. But that's their claim to fame anyways. It's, it's just more sleeker, more low profile, and less bounce. You know, headlamps are great. They follow your head. They don't follow your eyes, though. So that's one thing. That's one area where a, you know, a handheld torch may, may win the battle. But again, nothing like hands-free operation. And lastly, one I'm pretty proud of, is my own light. Now, it's not a headlamp. I call this the Shell Toucher micro LED bunk light. This, this will get you around the albergues. So if you don't want to bring a headlamp at all, but finding the bathroom is a concern for you, as it is with most people, this is often your best bet. And this is a red LED light. And this is all you need. This will not wake others up. This is actually probably one of the most considered purchases you can make. This is my version of that. Not only that though, so yeah, it's just a regular push light, keychain push light, but it also has a switch on it. You can leave it on. So you could hang this over your head in your bunk while you're packing up something or looking for something or reading. You can read by this as well. Uh, you can wear this on the back of your backpack or while you're walking on the side of the road so people can see you. So that's just a little switch right there. Turn that off and then it's back to just squeeze operation. But yeah, super simple. You can keep this in your bag, your sling bag, in your backpack, just close at hand. It's just so small. Super light. It's also durable. You can replace the battery, so it's reusable. It's not a throwaway light. It's ultra bright, and it has a 12-hour battery life. Plus, it just looks so cool, right? As with all of my products that I've worked on, this was inspired by my first Camino. This was something I could have easily used on my first Camino, because you will need this. It is good to have this in the morning when you're trying to get around the albergue, trying to get out the door before everyone else is up. And more importantly, your neighbors and fellow pilgrims will appreciate the fact that you're using a red light. This is also great for doing a last minute sweep around the bunk before you leave. Again, really quick. It's not like a headlamp that you have to push on, hold on. It's really just push, squeeze it. Look around the bunk, see if you've left your towel, left whatever, a necklace, anything. You can leave anything, you know, power cord. This is a great last minute sweep before you're out the door. It's also 7.5 or 8 grams, somewhere around there. Super light. Again, just put it in your sling bag or your fanny pack if you wear those and yeah it's there when you need it so another light option a light light option another really cool thing about petzl and their design again these guys have been in the business i think longer than pretty much anybody is their little travel bag it comes with and this looks like any other travel bag right you put it your light in there where you're not using it and some might not even bring this with them it's just something else to carry but i say you should because this works with the light. In combination with the light, it works as a diffuser. So if you are reading at bed in, uh, in the bed at night, most likely reading or journaling, if you're journaling in your, your bunk at night, see that? The light's on and it diffuses the light. So it's not as bright. And they had this in mind when they designed this bag and it's white ripstop, it works perfectly. In photography, they use a very similar material for, to set a diffusing light. So very well thought out. So you go, Petzl. Again, there'll be links below. And now, as promised, Time for a killer hack. Well, folks, as I explained at the beginning, I wear a big hat. I wear a, a piff hat. See, this is, this is what I wear. Don't judge me. It works. This is probably one of the best designs ever. Uh, having lived in uh, Arizona for almost a decade, everyone there was wearing cowboy hats. I wore this. I was hiking the desert quite often and a big bulking 10 gallon hat is not the way to go. This, however, this piff hat design, is the way to go. And it's not even like a traditional pith where it's canvas. This is actually straw, but it's durable straw with uh, uh, rain resistant coating on top of it. So you can actually wear this in the rain as well. I think it's the best hat. It really, it protects you from the sun. I'll do a future episode where we cover this more, but the problem with it is putting a strap over this, it would slide. It doesn't stay down because of the conical shape of the hat. This slides up. So it's just not a good fit. I kept losing the light. So that's where I would have to wear it around my neck. So what was the workaround? 
what would be the workaround? And this is the workaround. You're probably thinking I glued this to my hat. I did not glue this to my hat. Okay, I mean, I glued it to the hat. No, I did not glue it to the hat. This is my, well, again, what I think is a killer hack. Magnets. Magnets are the future. I created this whole little magnet hack. So what you're going to need for this is just a cheap Tika. And these are, um, when I say cheap Tika, this is probably the lowest price Tika. Probably about $30, $35. Um, the classic Tika. Very much like this one. Elastic design. However, this one gives you more like 180 degrees when it comes to which direction you want to turn it. You can go up, you can go down. So I think you just get more bang for your buck. And it has a red light too. It also has some green light on here as well. This is a, a very popular feature with Tikas. This like glow in the dark green light so you can find it in the dark. If you drop the light or if it's off or it's in your bag. So that green ring will glow. Anyways, not to digress too much. So it's more directional than your classic Tika, cheaper than the other, other versions I have. So what you're going to need to achieve this, and again, this is just great. It, it cuts out the strap. You don't need to wear it on your head anymore, especially if you wear hats. This is a great workaround tip. So now if you have a baseball cap, you can just magnetize it to the top of your hat or to the rim, and you can turn it face out like this. See that? So I can have it on the rim. Might be a little top heavy, but if you have it right on the top of your hat, perfect. Or the face of your hat, I guess you could say. And there's other hats too. People like hats, especially in cool mornings or cool dark evenings while they're hiking, or brisk, we'll say. So you don't want to take it off just to wear the headlamp. This is the workaround. This is also great for um, bunks. If you're in a bunk that's has is primarily made out of metal or has metal components on it, you can just magnetize this to the bunk, turn it on, and you can read right there, then and there. You can also still use it in combination with the diffuser bag. So there's just a million and one. You can wear this on your shirt. See that? You're probably wondering why it's sticking to my t-shirt. I am too. No, it's sticking there because I have a... Camino show. Yeah. We'll talk about this in a future episode too. But it's stainless steel. Or it's steel. It's metal. And so yeah, you can. I could wear this like that on my shirt. I could wear this on my hat. It's just, it's, it just gives you more options. Make the most out of your gear. You know how we roll here. Also, if you're concerned about cutting the strapping off your Tika, fear not. Here's a little workaround. You just need some elastic cord. You can get this real cheap. There's different gauges too that you can use. And you would just use this. If you still want to be able to wear it around your neck sometimes or wear it around your head, you just put this adjustable be uh, button on it and boom, you're back in action. There's actually a company called Bindi. I believe it has a similar similar style band. So this is not in cutting that strap. This is a great workaround. And you can have the best of both worlds. Both! Anyway, so what you're going to need is one inch or one and a half inch steel washer. You can get a bag of these at Home Depot or any hardware store for probably under a dollar, two dollars. Uh, you need some high power magnets. These are actually two magnets together that I have separated with a little plastic washer just because it makes it stronger. But if you're an ultralight hiker, you can get away with just using one magnet. It's just with my pith hat, the material's a little bit thicker. So I really need some more oomph, if you will. Um, so that's why I chose to use two. But you play around with it. Remember, always experiment with these things before you get on the Camino, before you get on the trail. Train, train, train. But don't only train, not only train yourself, train, not only train, 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 but also rehearse. No, God, what am I trying to say here? Use your gear. Train with your gear. Push your gear. If it's raining outside, go for a hike in that gear. Go for a hike in your rain gear. Okay, again, getting way off track here. Anyways, just practice with it. A million and one uses. What you're going to need. High power magnet. There'll be a link below for this. One inch, 1.5, one and a half inch washer, steel washer. Clear grip contact adhesive Gorilla Glue. This is the one I chose to use. If you know of a, another glue, or if you know of a better glue, leave it below. But this isn't the, the glue that dries and puffs up. This is nice. It's clear. Goes on. It's like super glue. It's a lot like super glue. And I will do a little demonstration here. Inside the pencil box, it comes with batteries and it's inside a separate box. It's great for resting the plastic casing on as you apply the glue and the washer and leave it there to dry. It fits perfectly. It's like it was designed for this. So 
use that by all means. And it's super simple, super easy hack. It takes two seconds. It cures, the glue cures in probably 24 hours. So you can use this the very next day. And that's it, folks. Super easy, simple hack that I absolutely love. And it's really been a game changer for me when it comes to lighting. Because again, in the past, it's been a pain in the butt with it around my neck. Now, this brings us to the end of this episode when it comes to illumination. However, this is only part one. In part two, our next episode, I'll be bringing to you even more hacks in regards to lighting. And so folks, if you've enjoyed this tip and episode, please like, subscribe, and comment below if you have your own hacks when it comes to lighting. I'd love to hear them. And so would everyone else that's been attending these episodes so far. The more information we can share, the better off we'll be. Again, please sub, sub to us. In fact, scan this right here. Can you scan that? I'll wait. Come on, you're holding your phone already. Just, okay. And just subscribe. I have more tips coming every week, more tricks and hacks. And, and again, please consider using our affiliate links below. Those help get me back out there on the trail where I will come up with more tips, tricks, and hacks at zero cost to you. That's right, folks. So thank you for tuning in. Until next week. One can you help?